morning, Colonials. I'm Jacqueline McCluskey. And I'm Rylan Swanigamp. Today is Wednesday, March 16th. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Lesson for today are teriyaki beef, steamed rice, steamed peas, and pears are one of the alternatives, pizza, chef salad, or a PB&J Uncrustable. We would like to wish a happy birthday to Jocelyn Smith. Now for today's announcements. Welcome to the weather forecast of your morning announcements. Today it is partly cloudy with a high of 67 degrees and a low of 47 degrees. Sunrise was at 7.30 a.m. and sunset will be at 7.27 p.m. How many of you feel stressed out? I know I'm a little stressed out. We are halfway through the school year now and grades and the lack of sleep can really catch up on us. Combine that with annoying kids in your class and it can be a recipe for a disaster, right Mr. Beeman? That's right Mrs. Evans. I see a lot of students right now having a hard time coping and dealing with stress. You know, some stress is good. It can motivate us to do well, but it can also wear us down and make us feel bad about ourselves. That's right, Mr. Newman. Sometimes we just explode. Have you ever gotten so mad that you yelled, cursed, or saw red, your heart beats faster, and you sweat, and you feel like you could flip a table or slam a door on the hinges? People try to calm you down, but you can't think straight. Or have you ever just zoned out? And not just a small daydream, but for a longer time. You feel numb inside without a care. You just can't solve the problem, or maybe you feel a deep loss. So you dream about other things. Thinking is hard, and learning to remember is harder. Yeah, it is, right? Both of these responses are from your brain dealing with stress. Okay, make a fist, everybody, and listen along. Let's see, I'm gonna go this way. Okay, <laughs> so this is your brain stem, and it's in charge of your primary function. So this is your brain. This is your brain stem. So it's like breathing, blinking, things you don't even think about. And then in the center here is where your emotions are. And so this is your amygdala. So this is when you get angry and you get real frustrated. And then the outside are your lobes. So that's where your higher thinking comes from, your, your creativity, your planning. And so when you get really, really, really upset, your lobes shut down. And all you can do are the things in your brainstem and your, your emotions. So these things stop working and that's why you can't think very clearly. Yes, yeah, so our body feels a threat and we go into fight, or flight mode and then the lobes shut down and we feel our emotions and bodily functions like our heartbeat. We can't think straight because our lobes stop working, which is why you may do something hurtful and really not mean it later. Mrs. Evans, those are really impressive hand motions. Does that st calm your stress <laughs> a little bit? A little bit, thank little bit. you. Let's watch the clip on anger. Teachers, could you please play that clip? So now we understand what causes our raging emotions, but what can we do to calm ourselves down? One strategy is to reframe our thoughts. So you mean to rethink about our situation and maybe using empathy? Right. For example, the situation is someone pushes you in the hallway and runs. Reframe it as maybe they are late to class or worried about missing their bus. The situation is a teacher did not put a grade in Skyward when you know you turned it in. So you can reframe that situation by emailing the teacher or asking your teacher politely about it. Maybe she or he was really tired when they were grading papers the night before, but you want to make sure you also pick the right time to talk to them as well and it's not in the middle of class in the middle of instruction. Right. Another situation is that your mom or dad act like you do not help around the house. Now it's your turn. How would you reframe that situation? What do you think, Mr. Beeman? Well, uh, it's important to think from the perspective of our parents. So maybe they worked all day and they're really tired and they need some help too. Right. And there's a list of ideas to help you calm down. For example, you could go for a walk, dancing, listening to music, or coloring. Because it all involves motion, it helps us regulate ourselves. Mr. Beeman, do you do any of those things to help regulate your anger? I don't dance. <laughs> I, I feel I'd break things if I danced. But I do have a seven-year-old that likes to color, so sometimes we'll get a coloring book out. And it really is therapeutic to sit down with her. Um, she does it for a lot of fun, but it does relieve some stress when I color with her. 
So in addition to that, some other ways to help is to talk to somebody about how you feel or write it down. If you have trouble sleeping and you're thinking the same thing over and over again, getting up, writing it down, it'll help you sleep better. What are some ideas you use to relieve some stress in situations that you face? Finally, kids, we want to leave you on this note. If you have said something hurtful in a moment when you were angry or emotional, go back to that person and apologize. That is what mature adults do. Not all adults, but we know mature, mature people do that. Mrs. Evans, isn't that the truth? <laughs> but guys, remember, life is not easy, but your success is how you react to it. We have a few weeks to go. Hershey Park is around the corner. And we hope that all eighth graders are able to join us on that trip. We want everyone to do the right things at the right time for the right reasons. We hope this presentation will help you understand how to navigate the right reason. Today's quote comes from Desmond Tutu. My humanity is bound up in yours, for we can only be human together. Remember to do the right things at the right time for the right reason. Now please take a short moment of silence to reflect upon anything that you wish. It's a great day to be a colonial.